Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group with our DT Trade Strategies for the week beginning April 26, where we do a short video, 5 or 10 minutes, for our Twitter and YouTube followers uh, to give you a little taste about what we do for our regular subscribers. And as always, I want to emphasize that um, we're looking to make trades, not to forecast the future. So we identify conditions with a high probability outcome and acceptable capital exposure. So we use our technical analysis to identify the probable position of a market. And then once we're confident in that, we then develop a specific trade strategy with entry stop and how to manage the trade, that sort of thing. Today, I'm going to take a look at a couple markets we've looked at uh, the last couple of weeks and again emphasize the trade strategies uh, and uh, see if there's a trade strategy coming up. I'm going to add one market in. So let's start off with my favorite or one of my favorites anyway, the euro. Well, this is daily data. I'm going to put my cursor on a week ago um, on uh, last uh, Friday the 16th. And as of last Friday the 16th, you can look at the video from last week looking for a probable high. Uh, we we're going to probably get uh, a little bit higher early in the week and then we probably make at least what we call a daily high followed by a corrective decline three to five days. So we certainly went higher on Monday, uh, closed kind of flat on a Tuesday and Wednesday. So it wasn't a, a good sell setup those days, a specific go short strategy. There definitely was on Thursday. That's what we call an outside three close bear reversal day. So it's an outside day and uh, it closed below the closes of the past three days. So um, that's a that's a pretty strong signal that the trend is probably reversed and we've completed what we call the daily high and uh, we would be and it would be followed by three to five day or so corrective decline and of course the daily momentum has been overbought for a while and as of that day they made a bear reversal so everything was in place for the immediate short trade and, and didn't even have to wait for the close of course I realize a close on these daily bars is uh, just a, a lull in the trading they call it maintenance period or whatever and then trading starts up again but it's the it's the end of the day of active trading let's let's call it before the overnight trading um, so anyway certainly was a good setup as far as I was concerned uh, near the close uh, when we, it was obvious we were going to close below the close of the last few days so it was a good short setup as far as I was concerned I took it and what happens well the next day stopped out that's the way it goes. Uh, that's why you want to identify conditions with a high probability outcome, but acceptable capital exposure. And you adjust your pos position size depending on where your entry and your stop is. And of course, if you're entering on this bar that day, sometime near the close, where would you put your stop? Well, your stop would be no higher than above this bar. Why is that? Well, it's either a reversal day or a trend continuing continuation day or it's not and if it takes out that bar is high the high trading of that day on the following day then something else is going on so on Friday then well big up day on Friday um, however it's actually it's kind of clarifying the short-term uh, pattern outlook at, at least I think it is so once again, when your technicals are all near extremes, uh, you may get stopped out, but that, that doesn't void the technicals. That, that they're, they're still at the extremes. Uh, so you just want to identify uh, an entry strategy, a specific trade strategy. Well, here's the 240-minute data of the euro coming up from the March 31st low. So we could do various counts in here. Um, but the, the fact is, is that this is an impulsive structure, by the way, what we call in Elliott Wave terms impulsive. That means whenever it does make its high, the decline should be corrective, not a resumption of a bear trend to a new low. It should be a corrective decline and correct, what we call correct this advance, probably to around 50% retracement or so. So when everything is at an extreme and we make a new high like we did on Friday, we go under the assumption that this last little ABC decline was a, we'll just call it a wave four, we do our 127, 162% external retracements. And uh, given that we're already, we've already actually passed the ideal time target, which was last Wednesday, the 20th, to complete this high. So as W.D. Gann said, when time is up, change is in inevitable. So 
We've passed the uh, typically the extreme in time to make the top, uh, and our daily momentum's been overbought for a long time. So I'm looking at uh, just above Friday's high as a probable. Uh, point of reversal and completing this advance from the March 31st low. Now, as of now, because the nearest minor swing low is Thursday's low, that's quite a ways away from where the market settled on Friday. So um, unless we have a nice well-defined uh, minor swing low that's made uh, between Sunday night and the active trading into Monday morning. It might be Tuesday or so before the actual trade setup is made. But I want you to be aware of, um, you know, sometimes you take a trade, you get stopped out, you, you have a minimal loss, and then just don't back off from it. Don't get shy. It's still in a position to complete at least a daily high. And by the way, more than likely, I'm going to go to the weekly, more than likely it's just a temporary high. We're going to have a corrective decline and then another advance of uh, at least several days, if not even a week or two. So uh, that's all speculation. Though All I'm looking at is we are in a on the forex, uh, or not the forex, the euro is in a position to complete at least what we call a daily high, followed by a corrective decline. In this case, because this is kind of extended, it could be four or five or six days uh, corrective decline. It typically reach about the 50% retracement. So that's why trade strategies are important. The other market we looked at for the past couple of weeks was the S&P. And I'm going to put my cursor on last Friday, so the last recording we made on Saturday. And again, we're identifying that we're probably in a position, or the market was in a position, to complete at least a daily high and even possibly a weekly high. And, of course, the daily momentums were overbought. Uh, they had been for several days. Now, Monday was a good setup for a sell. Whether you took it Monday or Tuesday, either one of those were both good setups for sells, go shorts, uh, bear fund, whatever. Uh, and if you took it on a Monday, and then uh, we had a good down day the next day, as also is a good setup. There's specific sell strategy on Tuesday, but oh boy, what happened Wednesday? Big snapback reversal. Then what happened on Thursday? A snapback bear reversal. Uh, Mark has gone up, down, up, down, and of course on Friday, uh, we had another reversal back up day. So things have changed now. The technicals have changed in that as of Friday actually made a bull reversal uh, from the oversold zone and the daily momentum. So that's pretty reliable that we'd be sideways to up for two or three days. And um, if we do the 127, 162% external retracement of this decline, the upside target would be around 4203, 4228 or 29. The thing to, you want to be aware of is that we actually closed lower on the week last week. That's significant to be aware of. And the weekly momentums reached dual look back overbought. So that typically warns us that the upside's pretty limited before a weekly high is confirmed. So short-term traders, it's a setup on the long side now following Friday's reversal up. But again, just be aware, depends on your time frame and how you, if you can enter intraday, all that sort of thing. But the upside's probably limited to around 4203, 4229 before uh, a weekly high is confirmed. So, um, so just be aware of that. And I just wanted to go here to the, uh, this is 60 minute data and uh, had the short sale and of course got stopped out. This is, I can even show you right where the stop was. It was at uh, right above, it was on the spy, but uh, right above this area got stopped out. I think on the spy, it was like three ticks above the stop and then what happened like within minutes of being stopped out is this happened and you know again welcome to the world of trading uh really aggravating by the end of the day thinking oh man took the stops out which were a little above the 78.6 percent retracement and then a little swing high above that um uh, actually was then thinking about another entry point on the short side however remember that the 
thing is, is the daily momentums are reached oversold. So the downside would, would be quite limited. And of course, here's what we have the next day is a, a significant rally well above these swing highs to actually test uh, the high from you know last week. So, but this, this is why trading strategies are so important. This loss was only one half of 1%. That's why you identify conditions with a high probability outcome and acceptable capital exposure. So one half of 1% loss on a trade is not bad at all. Um, and what would we anticipate now? Probably another two to three days sideways to up and probably reaching uh, that zone that we talked about a minute ago. So it's, it's not enough upside for me to consider a long trade, um, but it may be a short-term trader would consider that. And then if our uh, daily momentums reach overbought or make a bear reversal uh, sometime next week. Uh, because the weekly momentums have already made a bear reversal, we'd have daily and weekly momentums uh, on bear to com potentially complete a weekly high. So that's the trade strategies uh, that we had in the last week. And again, the upcoming week, because the weekly and daily momentums are working against each other. Those cycles are against each other. Um, it's a stand aside until the daily makes a bear reversal. So we'll see if that happens by the end of this coming week. One more market. Let's take a quick look at gold. So real quickly, here is gold weekly data. The weekly momentum has been due a look back overbought for three weeks, or overbought for three weeks. Last week, they reached the dual look back overbought position. Uh, last week's high was pretty close to the 62% retracement, but of significance, last week was ideally should be the maximum week before it completes a weekly high that's based on the low to low to high time factor. Here's the daily data, and what's very significant, uh, we've always considered for the past several weeks that this advance off the March low was a correction of one sort of another because of the, the pattern sequence and the pattern structure. And as of last week, it's in a position to have completed that A, B, C correction. Um, and the daily momentum has made a dual look back bear reversal. So it's a possibility. This was one, two, three, four, five. We'll take a look at the intraday data in a moment. We're right near some the significant 62% uh, retracement, 162% alternate price projection. And then we had some daily time factors near the end of the week, uh, which would si uh, signal that we'd complete the high by the 23rd. Well, we've made a reversal day right on the 22nd on Thursday. And that was actually a setup for a short trade, real minimal capital exposure. Certainly if you're long, uh, you want to bring your stops close to the market and have a stop no further than a close below the March 19th close. Why is that? That if we close, if gold, June gold closed below 1743.90, that's what we call closing overlap. It would indicate this corrective rally or confirm it was complete and gold would probably continue to a new low below the March low. That's fairly significant, uh, but it was a good setup on a short trade. Here's our uh, intraday data again, probable A, B, and then one, two, three, four, five for a C. Um, there is a possibility of a that uh, this is actually one, two, and it's just making the three and a four. That's a possibility. Um, however, we we know whether that's the case or not. In that, if gold just trades below 1763.50, that's the last swing low. That's what we call a pattern reversal signal, and it should be complete. If it does trade higher, uh, it shouldn't trade higher for more than a day or two before it completes uh, the the sequence on the way up. So it's in a position to have been completed and had a good sell setup as of the close or even a little bit before the close on Thursday with just a little minimal capital exposure for the potential of a continued decline to a new low. So whether it makes a new high or not, um, just keep in mind, it's near the extreme to complete a corrective rally uh, followed by continuation of the trend to, to, to a new low and the confirmation that that 
correction is complete as a close below 1743.90. That's it for today. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and a good week coming up. Be back with you next week. Check out our DT reports if you're interested in getting this kind of information every day. Take care.